Hey guys, today we are going to be doing some coaching on a bronze. Uh, well, he was bronze last season. He's currently climbing his way through iron, so technically we're in iron. Uh, Leona gameplay, a uh, player by the name of Space Bazooka. We're going to be coaching his Leona, and we're going to get some really good coaching done. So first off, before we get into the gameplay, I wanted to uh, comment on your runes. So Leona has a very set in stone... Uh, uh, initial page with Aftershock, that's totally fine. I wanted to go over three different rune pages that I use for Leona. Um, so we've got, if, if you expect that it's going to be a team fight heavy game, you want to go le uh, Legend Tenacity and Triumph. If you think you're going to absolutely stomp lane, you want to go into the Domination Tree for your secondaries and get Cheap Shot and Relentless Hunter. If you think you have a really hard laning phase ahead, you want to go Cosmic Insight and Biscuit Delivery. So this one, uh, this is the one that you ended up going. I also wanted to make one other note that you should swap out your CDR rune for either Adaptive Force or the um, uh, Attack Speed. Uh, higher ELO players prefer the Attack Speed one since it gives cleaner uh, animation cancels. But since we're, we're, we're playing in pretty low ELO, so I would just go for Adaptive Force and... Uh, get a little bit of early oomph behind your uh, your hits. So with that being said about the runes, let's go ahead and get into the game. We are taking a look at a Leona Jin lane into Sona Ash. So this is a game where I particularly would have gone into the domination tree, as we spoke about earlier, when you think that you're really, really going to smash lane, um, you can go into that lane. I love to see the proactivity. You're out of the base right away. Very fitting emo. That's the that's emo is my face too when I see none of my uh none of my teammates follow me out of fountain. So let's see what we do. Oh, this guy has been coached by Le by Aoki before. This guy is covering his entrances. Good stuff. Good stuff. We see Jax here, so we don't need to use the ward. If Jax happened to be one of these slackers that showed up to the game late, we would drop the ward and cover here. That way we see both entrances, but we're using our body as a ward. Good stuff. Good stuff. So again, this is a lane you want to absolutely smash. I can't think of a lane that you smash any harder than Ash Sona. The reason is because Leona is a lockdown champion that is really, really good against immobile squishies. Sona, especially at the time of uh, recording this, is incredibly weak in the meta. She's weak to Leona specifically, and she has exhaust. She has glacial and exhaust. So she's not going to bring be bringing utility like Airy or poke with Airy, and she's she has absolutely no kill potential. So I want to see aggressive play in this game. So like we talked about the runes, Triumph, Legend, Tenacity, great rune set. I just wanted to let you know that there are other options um, and to let the audience know that this player opted for the Triumph and Legend, Tenacity. Which is totally fine. All right. So we got Bush Control level one. Good stuff, good stuff. Good stuff. We're not taking any damage level one. The only way we lose this lane is if we take damage level one. If we get if we get roped into kiting like this, very very rarely is your is your level one going to actually work like that. Unless you go back here and uh, pivot over, very rarely are they just going to let you walk at you. And this is the only this is your only loss condition for the lane. Make it to level two and have more than sixty percent of your HP, and you this lane is yours. So, I would say that's the first misplay is that you've already lost about a, a third of your health bar trying to cheese something with level 1. Don't force it. Um, the only time you should be really taking damage is when you're coming out of the bush to auto-attack minions and push for that level 2. Don't don't try to do what you did there. Very, very rarely will that work. Leona's very easy to kite around. Also, make sure you're ready to go in at the level 2. Look where you are in relation to your ADC. This should never, never happen. Be ready for, that, for when that last minion dies and you hit level 2. Be ready to go in on them. Uh, it looks like you are hopefully going to be catching Ash. Honestly, with her being as low as she is, I would have gone ahead and flashed e on that, or even better yet, E-flashed, um, which I'm not sure you know this, so I'm just going to cover this. Uh, you can flash E, and that would, you you know, if they have decent reflexes, they'll flash out of it. Or you could E-flash, so it'll begin your E animation and then flash halfway through that, and it's almost like extending the range of your E, uh, making it so your E almost 100% hits. So let's go over the level two one last time. We did get kited around. It's too bad. It's too bad. Right around now is when you want to be snaking your way up here because you you, you guys are, uh, what, two, two minions from level two, right? Sorry, three minions from level two. You know this last one is going to give it to you, so why are you behind your ADC? He's ranged. He can easily hit it. 
you once you're one to two minions away from hitting level two, you want to start snaking your way over here. Abuse the fact they don't have vision to take them off guard, or just walk at them and make them back up and miss miss XP. But you never, ever, ever, ever want to be behind your ADC at level two in a lane like this ever. Absolutely no reason. Um, but you were, so our E didn't quite connect. Not going to get to abuse our level two power spike. Wow, Jin is hard carrying this lane though. Really, really well played by Jin. So this is the problem with lanes that even you're very, very strong in. If, if, think of the lane in, in, um, in segments of, of three. So this is their third. This is kind of like neutral land from here to here. This is like open neutral third, and here to here is your third. When it's in their third, there's nothing you can do as Leona. You contribute absolutely nothing. So that's why uh, abusing these level two power spikes is so, so uh, important, because immediately the wave moves into their third. And look how much you contribute. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All right, so first blood goes to top. Enemy jungler is there. Great pick right there. She stepped up. Absolutely no reason what she... No idea what she's doing. Drop the ignite ASAP. Drop the ignite ASAP. There you go. There you go. Because the ignite cuts down on their healing, and they've got a lot of healing in this lane, right? They've got summoner heal. They've got uh, Sona. So the sooner you drop that ignite, the better. That was really good. All right, Jin. Think of your health bar and Jin's health bar as one shared resource pool. Who should be who should be pressuring Sona right now? Is it Jin, who is desperately trying to farm and is about to be within kill range? He's got about 20% of his health bar left. How much do you have? You've got so much more. You've got so much more. Just step a little bit ahead. You ne I'm finding you behind your ADC way, way, way too often. you got to have presence. Even if you don't plan to go in on this, which you could... You could, you definitely can go in on this. Even if you don't plan to do that, find yourself in front of your ADC more. Right there. The longer you, the longer you wait to go in, the worse this lane gets, by the way. The longer you wait to go in, the, the, the worse this lane gets. Because you're, you're letting her poke you down. You're letting her do that to you. There you go. There you go. Good pick. Good pick. Oh, oh, oh. Hello? Your stun's still procced. You could use it on Sona here. So I gotta give props to your. You guys know I don't like giving props to ADC, but this ADC is actually like hard carrying your lane, and that is that shouldn't be the case. In a Leona lane, the support is the one that should be dictating the pace of the lane. Your Jin is like hard carrying you, right now. He's the one that caught Ash. He's the one that realized she's within kill potential. That's fine. That's fine. You you guys you guys got that kill. Walk to Sona. Think of your Zenith Blade as a. a I mean, it is a gap closer, but also just think of it as a way to like position yourself where you want to be. You've used it to position yourself. Why did you not stun her there? You're not you're not in, in, in kill range. You're not in danger. There's just no reason to not stun her there. You probably could have stunned her there. Jin walks forward. You guys kite her down the lane. You get her flash. And if she doesn't flash, you get her life. So uh, definitely wasted your stun here. Good job on killing the Ash. Again, credit goes to Jin on that. I'll be honest. This Jin is, is, is uh, he's playing way more proactive. Hey, guess what? Sona is totally alone now. We know the jungler's not on the bot side of the map because we just saw him top. We know the mid lane's not roaming because she just got a kill. So guess what you can do? Guess what you can do? You can dive her. You can dive her. That's the beauty of Leona, is that you've got about 30 seconds before Ash is back in lane, and you can dive. You can flash on her. You, got, you, uh, you gotta have presence in lane, my man. There's no reason this Sona should even be getting experience right now. Definitely, definitely think you should have uh, threatened to dive here. I do like that you got vision, but do that when it's already pushed to their turret. All right, we see, we see, we just saw Master Yi. Tell me where Master Yi is right now. Let's 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 do an exercise. Tell me where Master Yi is right now. Did you answer at his blue? Because that's exactly where he just passed over your ward. So we know Master Yi's coming here. Worst case scenario is Master Yi is right here. So we should be playing very cautious. We should not be playing like this. Okay, we see him back to his blue. He's not here. Take that, take that. There we go, there we go. Don't hesitate. 
I, I would have liked to see you do it the the first time. I like that you I I like that you uh you eventually did it. The key to playing Leona well is removing hesitation from your vocabulary. You do not want to be a hesitant Leona player. You want to you want to see a, posi a champion is out of position and go in on it. Good job, good job. Stay on it, stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. There you go, there you go. Now kite out, now kite out. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Beautiful. Now you want to start moving. Now you want to start moving back because uh, Master Yi's here. This might just, uh, this is probably a death. You want to stun him and run. Stun him and run. You can't save Jin anymore. You can't do any more for him. You also don't need to use your flash because Master Yi's already used his, uh, his alpha strike. So the, he has no way of closing that gap. You're also very, very tanky with Aftershock. Aftershock is currently giving you, uh, I can't check the numbers right now, but it's a lot. You're, you have 100 armor at level 4. That's so, so much. There's way more that he could do. That's way more uh, that he could cut through. He is going to kill Jin, though. There's not much more you can do for that. So, you wasted your flashes, which is like one of your biggest playmaking opportunities as Leona, is E-flashes. So, I guess just work on understanding like how just how tanky Aftershock actually makes you. This was a death sentence. You, you just killed yourself. Understand your limits, my man. Under understand your limits both ways. Understand your limits, how tanky, how absurdly, hilariously, brokenly tanky Aftershock makes you, um, especially early. And then also understand that this is not your job to try to steal this. You have no flash to get out. Very, very, very rarely will this ever work. It's not your job to steal this. You don't have smite. Also, I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess that you meant to stun Master Yi and try to kill him here. And it looks like you actually might have. Let me explain why this went wrong. This was a bad decision to do this, but let me explain why this went wrong. You stunned Sona, who you have absolutely no chance of killing. You want to know why? It's because you pre-popped your Q. If you pre-pop your Q, it's going to automatically... You don't get to choose who you stun. It's going to automatically stun the person that you eat onto the last person that you you're e rooted so you probably could have killed master yi here if you did some auto animation canceling let's say you eat a sona auto q auto this yi ignite you probably kill him you probably kill him but since you wasted your stun on sona it removes your ability of doing an auto q auto combo and you stunned the wrong person so understand when you want to pre-pop your Q and when you don't. That's a mechanic that not a lot of people even realize is in the game. Is that when you pre-pop your Q as Leona, you you have taken decision making out of your hands. You don't Leona, no matter what, will stun the last person you rooted. It's automatic. Okay. So we're doing we're doing a, a gank here, we're fighting vision in the jungle. Okay, this is getting a little fiesta e. Oh, there goes Jen. Okay. So let, let moments like these are a little difficult to coach because these are kind of just like low, very low elo like fiestas. So let me walk through what I can actually coach you on here. Looks like your team's like all invested on in like getting a cheese pick in their jungle or something. All right, so let me let me explain something. Aftershock also d deals damage, and it's not a ton, but it's a little bit. It, it it's a, it's an AOE just like it it does damage. So when you have your aftershock procked and the target is obviously a flashless Sona, you want to stay on top of her. You want to stay on top of her like this Jax did, and you you would have killed her here. Leona's very much a champion. You can't, there are no half measures with this champion. You can't sort of catch Sona and then just walk away like you did. If you're catching Sona, you're in there to the death, or until she dies. And if you had done that, you're, you would have killed Sona. You would have gotten your Aftershock damage off, you would have gotten your uh, like another auto attack, and Sona would be dead by now. And this would be like a decent trade, but since you didn't commit to the target, all four of you are going to die and you're not going to get anything. And, and sometimes just get, oh okay, three of you are going to die and you're not going to get anything. And sometimes, especially since you have that Triumph rune, remember when I said why you bring Triumph? 
for lots of skirmishes and team fights like this, Triumph is a godsend in, in, in scenarios like this. You get so much health back, and then that might give you enough health to, to last until your next combo is up, and then you might get another kill and get some more health back, and it just keeps going. But since you, it, it looks like you're like you're hesitating, and also you're just like going in on half measures. So I want to see you if you're going to commit to fiesta kills like this, commit, commit. Your champion, that's what your champion does. She's very sticky. She stays on top of people. What she doesn't do is run away. She doesn't do. She you don't contribute anything if you if you play like that. Okay, getting more vision. I like it, I like it. Pro plopping control wards in the enemy jungle is a little risky because, like, you're investing a lot of gold into that, right? That's 70 gold, and it's giving the enemy, uh, I believe, 30 gold. So that's, like, a 100 gold deficit. I wouldn't necessarily usually use my control wards unless we unless you have a huge lead. Uh, typically, how I ward, how I look at warding, if you're winning the game, you want to get aggressive vision in their jungle. If it's a close game, I would consider this a close game, especially with how early it still is. Um, you want to contest vision in the river. This control ward is much better used right here or right here or right here. This is so much more contestable vision. You're going to get way more gold value out of it, and it's going to last a lot longer. This, the first time someone sees this, they get to clear it for free, and they get free gold. So I, I would kind of stray away from using my control wards in enemy territory just because you can't protect them. Okay, it looks like Jen is like cheesing. He's like pretending to not be in lane. Something kind of weird. Something kind of weird. Yup, right here. You looked for it. You looked for it. It's fine. It's fine. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. Oh, you did get it. Wow. That Sona is like kind of a donkey. Good job. Good job. Good job. Little sloppy, but good stuff. Good idea. Okay, you've got your aftershot going. You've got your aftershot going. You're kiting away. Good job, good job. Great job, great job. Excellent job knowing exactly when to go back in. I'm guessing you, you went back in the second your Q was up. That's what you want to do. You want to kite around until your Q is back up. This was terrible. But it worked out. You guys got a three for nothing. So now you have a huge, huge lead. Good job, good job. Excellent, excellent job. Little sloppy on, on the raw alt, but... um. You know, all circumstances considered, that was really, really good for you guys. So now, let's use that. Let's use that to the max. So let's go over itemization. Itemization is very, very uh, basic on Leona. At the moment, it's getting a little more complex as we get, you know, into the Season 10. Because there's now an alternative build where you can rush Gargoyle's Stone Plate. And I think that's a really good build. Uh, but lower elo, let's keep it simple. Um, in a game like this, you want to go Zeke's. In a, in a game where you're playing a little bit closer, maybe a little uh, more defensively with your ADC, uh, I would go Knight's Vow. So it looks like you're rushing Knight's Vow. That's fine too. Those are the two core items though, Zeke's, Zeke's and Knight's Vow. Okay, Jin died. It looked like he overstayed and never backed, which is, you know, you can't, you can't really do anything about that. This was good. This was good. I just saw you do something really, really smart. You were about to go here, but you realize this is a better angle to cut her off from, and you wanted to stall because if you, the second she sees you, she's going to run away, right? So you, not only did you find a better route to take, you stalled for your follow-up damage. Jax, if you immediately ran at her, Jax was not going to be in range. So I don't know if you, you know, consciously did that, but that was really, really smart of you. So now you run at her. Now you run at her. Great catch. Great catch. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Great gank. Very, very smart. I, w I want to capitalize on the good things that you're doing and correct the bad things that you're doing. That's how this coaching should work. Okay, now what I would be doing, and this is a little bit nitpicky, but I would be going through the river because the same way that you just had a better angle than that Lux and didn't give her really any room to like run after she saw you, you can do the same thing to Ash. This, she probably dropped the ward here. And remember, the second they see you, they're going to start backing up. So I would be walking through the river here and taking the risk that this isn't warded because then you can come out behind her. And if you come out behind her, she's dead. She's immediately dead. But you still might get the jump on her here. You've got Moby Boots, which gives you that positional advantage. Okay, yep, you got the jump on her here. You got the jump on her. Go for the, go for the Ash. Go for the Ash. Pop that W. I think you should get into the habit of pre-popping your W. 
Yeah, this, this, look, you've, you've already taken all this damage. W could have negated so much of that. So what I do is I slide my finger across the W E key. That will build that muscle memory to, I, 99% of the time that I use my E, I use my W. Because the earlier you can get it off, the better. Because guess what? It also has an interaction with Aftershock, where W gives the resistances, and then you pop Aftershock. And Aftershock was changed this season to give you bonus resistances, like percent-wise, based off how many bonus resistances you have. So by having the W up and giving you those armor and magic resist, you're also making your Aftershock better. And your E procs your Aftershock. So you're making your Aftershock weaker by not pre-popping your W. And it's also good to pre-pop your W because then, like, all of your damage comes out at once. Like, your your Aftershock goes off, your W comes off. It's very, very bursty. It's really, really nice. But let's let's look at how much your health bar goes down before you actually use your, your W. I think you turn it on here. You lost 610 health while your W wasn't up. That would be, like less than half of the damage you would have taken. That's more than twice the damage you would have taken if you pre if you pre-popped your W. And now, yeah, you're mitigating a little bit of damage here, but not much. And now you're way too low to contribute anything to the fight. So this was a good catch. I loved the roaming. I loved the pathing. Uh, good stuff. Well, I, I, I still think you should have came through the river just because you, you could have the surprise element, but you still got it anyway. So great, great job. I'm loving the rotations back and forth. I also love that you went uh, mid to kill Lux, but your ADC died. You're making the most of your time. You didn't just sit in lane and like leech XP. You're doing you, you're doing a lot of really good things, man. You're doing a, a whole lot of really good things, and I think you're going to climb a lot. Like I said, guys, this is being played in Iron, but he has very few games played. So he was bronze two last season. I think you're going silver gold this season if you continue playing like this. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> excuse my pun, excuse my wordplay. We're gonna iron out the kinks though. We're gonna iron out the kinks. Okay, so tell me what you did wrong there. Let's talk about what you did wrong. You caught Lux, which is good. But what did you do wrong? Guess what didn't land? Guess who's not stunned because of it? That's called a raw alt. It's called a raw alt, and it's one of the biggest mistakes I see Le uh, low elo Leona players do. Her combo is E, Q, R. Drop the R while they're stunned. Another thing you can do if you're trying to stagger it out uh, is you can stun, you cue them, stun right, and then you can E into R. You kind of like what I talked about earlier, pre-popping your Q, you slide your fingers across ER. And what that does is it roots them, I believe it's a 0.5 second root, and during that 0.5 seconds you drop the R. So your R 100% lands. But when you do it like this, it's really hard to hit the stun if they're not already CC'd. And that's why Leona's kit has so much CC. You want to CC them and make sure the R actually lands. I mean, it didn't make any difference here, but I, I promise you as you get better at the game, it will. Missing your stun, the difference between putting a, a, a one-second stun on someone and putting a slow on them is massive. It's tremendous. You do not want to miss. You want to minimize the amount of alts that you miss, especially in scenarios like that when there's no reason to not just drop the R on top of everything. This is very, I, I, I don't, once again, I think this is not your guys' place to be doing this dragon. We don't have enough information about where they're at. I, I think they're just going to come down here and kill this and kill you guys and take the dragon. Definitely not a good call here. So, once again, sort of just like a knowing your limit. Also, let's say you do have to fight. Look how little mana you have. You're completely drained on mana. What are you going to do? Do you, do you even have enough for a stun? You don't. Yeah, so once again, just kind of know your place, know your role. It was not your role to start this dragon. Also, always try to, like, flash over a wall. Put a wall between yourself when you're flashing. It's a little nitpicky, but yeah, th this was the worst thing I've seen you do. Is You've got this weird penchant for, like, starting dragons or trying to steal them. Same thing with uh, telling you to flash over a wall. Always try the blast cone over a wall. Try to put a wall between the person you're, uh, between you and the person you're running from. All right, there we go. We got Knight's Vow. We see a fight breaking out mid. Oh, it looks like you're a little torn over. Should you go mid or should should you go bot? 
Mid is the correct choice. Mid is the correct choice. There's nothing you can do alone, bot. Okay. Okay, okay, we're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Looks like you just wasted a whole lot of time. I would have just been hovering mid because you guys could definitely, like, okay. Let's talk about pathing here. What I talked about earlier, coming out behind them and not letting them have, like, any room to uh to turn around, that's what you should be doing here. You should be, you should be flanking them, making them move towards your team, whereas this way you guys are all coming from the same way, so of course they're going to run this way. And they're way more likely to get out because of it, see? Now, if you had came from back here, and started the fight, this would be a very, very different fight. So pathing on, on a champion like Leona is very, very important. Knowing when and where to come out. Okay, your team doesn't seem super gung-ho about fighting, which is fine. Which is fine, unless you get a really good pick. That's your pick. That's your pick. Great job. This gen is doing crazy. Gr crazy, crazy work. Okay, so... Let's talk let's talk one more time about raw alting, okay? Remember when I said there's a big difference between a slow on a character and a stun on a character? The difference between this Ash living and dying is that difference. If Ash was stunned right here, Jax jumps on her and kills her. Now the fight's very very different because we once again raw ulted. Listen man, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to make fun of you, right? It's really hard to land raw alts. There's, there's a level of prediction. You have to know which way they're going to be walking, how fast they're going to walk. You have to predict like if they have dashes or flashes up. It's hard. That's why Leona's kit is designed so that you very rarely have to raw ult. Raw ulting should be like your last resort. You, like, you should only raw ult if that's the absolute only way you're going to catch someone. Very nice. Very nice. Got another catch. Yeah, this... Yeah. This gen's doing really good. You got a lot to work with. This is good. This is good. Okay. So we overstayed. Looks like a fight's going down here. They should. I think they should get out. Yeah, they're out. They're out. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. You're here, back to the fight. Okay. So, at some point during this, you should realize... I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and assuming that you have reflexes enough to know that you're going to get hit by a Luxalt. With Mobies, you really shouldn't be getting hit by those. You You, you really should be like moving out of them since it's such a delayed move but it's alright okay I missed that we'll have to watch that again it's good that you cancelled your back it's good that you're flexible with uh, your backs, because some players would just be like, "Oh, my team's fighting, and Lux is completely out of position. Doesn't really care. Do doesn't really matter. I'm buying." So it's good that you're willing to to uh to cancel your back there. That one is not necessarily your fault. You did try to chain your CC right there, and Darius pulled her out of it. I'm gonna give you a pass on that one. You you had the right idea there. <laughs> Darius literally yoinked her out of it. Okay, where are you going though? Where are you going? The fight's moving this way. So your options are either to come back here and channel your recall again, or or move forward with the fight. No reason to come over here. Worst case scenario is that Master Yi was stealing a camp over here and he comes and kills you. The faster you can back, the the better though. Like if you aren't going to plan to stay out here, which you probably shouldn't with only 400 health, the faster you can recall, the better. Because you guys should be fighting for this next dragon. Masty, it looks like Masty is soloing it actually. He was, he was getting the scuttle. Very, th yeah. The fact that you haven't recalled yet is is pretty bad. Uh, not, you're not as big of a threat if you only have 400 health. 
for obvious reasons. Okay, once again, once again, you're overstepping your bounds. This is not your this is not your call. It looks like it might have been Fizz that started it. I'll get I'll I'll give you a I'll give you a get out of jail free card there, but the first two times were definitely like you wanting to do dragon. Okay, you guys killed uh you guys killed Master Yeet. Now you do dragon. Now there's no reason not to do dragon. Great job. Yep. And I also want to point out I really like that you're not unprocking your Moby boots doing the dragon. The uh your job during the dragon is to do exactly what you're doing. Looking for picks, looking to zone, and keeping your Moby Boots procced. And what I mean by that is that the second you go into combat, you lose 115 movement speed. So your catch potential drastically decreases. So I really liked what you what you did there, which is zoning. You're walking around, you're looking for picks, you're, you're having presence. You weren't just auto-attacking. Like, you damaging the dragon is going to save maybe, like, a second and a half. Like, it's literally not worth it for you to use all your mana and unproc your Mobies. You, you did right. And this is another good pick. I think I see the problem. I think I'm seeing the problem. It it worked there. I think you're trying to greed for an auto attack before you uh before you drop your ultimate. Let's watch that again in slow motion. I think I've identified the problem here. Okay, so somewhere along the way, you, you've gotten the idea that, like, you have to throw in an auto attack before you ultimate. You really, really don't. In some scenarios, you can, but I think that's why you're missing so many uh, ultimates. Maximizing damage is good, but not when it's like it, there's a risk reward to it, right? Maximizing damage in laning phase where every auto attack counts is great. Maximizing your damage 21 minutes into the game when you have three people here ready to follow up and like actually deal the damage is not worth it. So I, I, I guess just like work on understanding when you should be sneaking in those extra auto attacks because Leona's a great champion for like learning all of her animation cancels because there's a lot of things that you can sneak in extra autos there and really maximize your damage. But usually when you're making catches, especially at this stage of the game, it's not worth it, man. Like you've got an assassin to just one shot her you know what i mean you're catching her you're not meant to do all of the damage so it is good that you know that that you know that you can do that but um eqr a asap the priority is keeping them locked down Okay, so let's 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 look at what happened here. So we see they're on it. We get vision. I think I think we we don't go in on this. I don't think we go in on this. I think we understand that this is a lost fight. Your top laner's not there. Your jungle's kind of inting. You're not going to bring enough damage to like actually make a difference here. So you know, it's a tough call because your jungler's going in and you might lose Baron if, if he dies anyways, but I probably wouldn't have gone in on that. Alright, so you guys got slaughtered. Not not necessarily your fault. You know, you tried to salvage the play. It wasn't your play to go over there and like... But I probably wouldn't have gone in. All right, so I'm I'm gonna assume that this is where the game takes a uh, a tragic turn. Things were going pretty well earlier, but uh, they they've got Baron now. I, I saw another raw ultimate. I hate to see that. You gotta st you gotta break yourself of that, man. You gotta break yourself of that habit. Only try to make it like a rule for yourself. It's that you're only dropping your ultimate when you got a 99% chance of hitting it. Okay, Master Yi's going down here. Okay, once again, pathing, pathing. You're trying to catch Master Yi, right? You're trying to catch Master Yi pushing this turret. So let's think about let's think about the best way to do that. 
it's the exact same thing. Remember when I, I complimented you for going here instead of here because you, you're, you're cutting off her exit? You're coming in behind them. You can do that same thing when they're pushing your turret. You can take this path through here and come in behind them. Because the second they see you or Jin, they're going to run away, right? He runs away the second he sees him. And if you were here instead of instead of taking this path, you could have killed this Master Yi. You killed him anyways, but I digress. Pathing is very, very important as, as a catch champion like Leona. It can mean the difference between catching them and being very, very useful, possibly game winning, and being very useless. Okay, you should you should be um, I think you should be leading the charge here. I I think you should have been in the in front of the fizz. I think this is a a, a fight that you guys absolutely win. I would have been looking to take that fight. You guys collectively didn't though. It's okay. Ash, way out of position here. Way out of position. She should not be allowed to walk up and do that to your turret. Walk forward. Have some presence. We see Jin and Master Yi bot. Also, I'm going. This is this is going to sound a little weird. You remember when you when you were growing up and uh, your parents told you not to do things, but you saw them doing them, and you're like, "Why are you allowed to do it and I'm not?" And they're like, "I'm an adult and you're a child." Uh, that's kind of what I'm about to explain to you. Righteous glory is a really great item for um for kind of like advanced use of Leona, but I I I try to tell the lower elo players to get the most like item and gold efficient items righteous glory is uh great for catching but zeke's and vow are like the core 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 items only on only on them i i would be building zeke's and vow pretty much every game and i know that i'm kind of a hypocrite for saying that because i play leona and like i buy righteous glory almost every game but trust me gold efficiency and item and um Armor MR wise, Zeke's and uh, Zeke's and Val is really really good. Okay, back out. You are inting. You are straight inting. There is nobody alive over here. You need to back out. Absolutely no reason to be over here. You got to think about like why would you even be on this side of the map? Are you gonna take this turret? Is there a dragon up? No reason for you to even be over here. If they were really good, if they were better players, Ash consistently slows you Sona comes over and glacials you and you don't get out and you die because you, do, you have no flash you just get ran down luckily they aren't very good players and Ash just put a couple autos on you and you're totally fine but that you being over there was a pretty red flag pretty big red flag to me We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. We're looking for pick. Didn't get the Darius pull. All right, your 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 flash is up. Looks like Jin's soft engaging for you. That's good. That's good. Uh, we we going in? Go in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in, 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 go in. All right, we missed our E. We missed our ultimate. All right, we did nothing that fight. So let's talk about what we could have done differently. You waste time over here. It looks like you're like thinking about warding or something. Oh, you do ward. And then you kind of pivot back. You need to immediately come over here and start the fight. The fact you let Ash start the fight is already bad. If this was me, if you're really scared about missing your E, which you end up doing, I would pop your W. Remember, pop your W for your Aftershock. Pop your W. Flash Q her. Keep her out of the fight. Or Flash Q Master E. Do something here. Do something. What actually ends up happening is we take all this damage, we miss our ultimate, we still didn't pop our W. Did we pop our W at all? No. We die with our W up. The only ability we have in our entire kit that is dedicated to surviving, 
That's why I want you to get into that habit of sliding your finger across and activating your W every single time you E. So that's what I, mechanically, I have seen some good things from you, like ideal wise, like game understanding wise, macro wise. Um, but I'm the two biggest takeaways I want you to get from this uh, coaching session mechanically is stop raw alting. Stop trying to sneak that extra auto in. Make sure you're landing your ultimate. You can work on like maximizing your damage when you get a little bit better at landing the ultimate. And also um, popping your W every time you E. You want to pop your W 99% of the times that you E. Back to the itemization thing, it looks like you are building Zeke's now. Um, if you really enjoy Righteous Glory, you know, some people do, I do, uh, then continue building it, you know, power to you, brother. I just want you to know that the two core items are uh, Zeke's and Val. Okay, we killed their jungler. We got the Baron. Excellent job. Instantly back. Good job, good job. Now we're running it down. Okay, you have Flash. You have Flash, and Ash is still frontlining. So what I do here, what I do here, I'll, I'll show you the exact moment that I flash E on her. Right there. We're, we're going to run it back two seconds. This Ash is so disrespecting you. You do not let her get this range in you. And and even worse, you let her auto-attack you. Right here, you, you E onto her, or you you flash Q her. You do not let her do this to you, man. She is so far out. She is so far out. And your follow-up damage is right here. You get on her, girl. You get on her, bro. Never let an Ash do that to you again, dude. Alright, Jin's top. Jin's top. Jin is split pushing, which is very, very sketch. Uh, honestly, I would at this point I would just consider Jin dead, and I would come down here and get the dragon. Okay, Jin actually got out. You guys get the dragon for free now. Do the dragon, do the dragon. Remember, don't pro don't unproc your mobies. But yo, man, spamping this dragon. This is actually a good dragon for you guys. You guys should just be. You guys should have just done this. I feel like I feel like any team that's getting spamping to do the dragon there would have done it. So that's on you for not spamping, honestly. Okay, now we're following up. We're following up. Jax is dead. Yeah, you guys definitely should have done that. Remember, yeah, okay, there you go. You got the W. Looks like Master Yi's dead. Yo, this gen is like kind of a monster. Hey, there you go. You landed it. Oh, and the dragons are going to help you too. You might actually... You're going to kill her. That's so funny. That's so funny, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, this is a very... This is a very rare occurrence. I mean, they're all like... Bam, they're all fiesting bot. This is a very rare occurrence where the right call actually is to do the dragon. So, good job. Okay, this is probably one of those low elo games where it's just going to come down to like a random team fight late game. Like this next team fight will probably just determine the f determine the game. Okay, we missed our fizzle. Once again, Sona getting super disrespectful. You are way too far behind, man. You need to be frontlining. There's no reason Jin should be getting these catches, these damages, these picks, and you not. You're lucky Jin has done like a lot of your job for you this game. Or else you guys would basically be, ha be having no picks. Oh, Jack's caught. That's a rough one. Alright, you guys are going to have to either... Y your options now are to give the inhibitor and hide under your nexus turrets or to fight an unfavorable 4v5. Alright, Jin, continuing to boss out. I, I don't disagree with this. You saw Master Yi, you tried to keep him out of the fight, use the Zenith Blade. Unfortunately, you, you have no way of uh, gap closing now. Bad, man, bad. Remember to drop that Q first, bro. Remember to drop that Q. 
Look, the difference the difference between you slowing her and you stunning this ash literally could could cost the entire fight. Remember to drop the Q first, buddy. Remember to drop the Q. Q Ash, you open with ult. That's a raw ult, my man. I'm I know I'm being harsh here, but I'm serious. I think you guys probably could have won this fight if you took Ash out of it. <laughs> Darius caught her again, wow. Ooh. All right, looks like, yeah, you guys just get ran over. All right, man. I've seen some good stuff. It looks like you're starting to have some really good uh, instincts about Leona. You definitely need to work on the mechanics and the combos and understanding when you should be sneaking in those extra autos. And uh, you got to reduce the raw alts, man. I think you landed one ultimate this game. You need to be, like, landing every single ultimate as Leona. There's no reason to miss it, essentially. When I miss an ultimate as Leona, I feel terrible because I know that there's no reason to miss it. I have a kit that's designed to make sure that I land my ultimate. Um, but beyond that, man, I, I, I honestly have seen some good stuff. Uh, it looks like you're starting to have some good instincts, good understanding of what the champion is designed to do. Uh, you just need to push yourself in the direction that understands why you're missing these ultimates and how big of an impact it can have on the game or the fight. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, I feel like I covered a lot of information. So if you have any questions, want me to clarify stuff, uh, let me know, man. Um, I'm rooting for you. I've seen some good stuff here and I've seen some bad stuff. And so let's iron out the bad stuff and capitalize on the good stuff, man. Uh, good progress, buddy. Take it easy. You got questions, you know where to find me, bro. Take it easy. Peace.